Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be part of this event. Today, my colleague Mina and I will talk about Tolkien's grave from the perspective of memory studies, our common field of interest. The objective is to present Tolkien's grave as a multi-layered site of memory. But first, let me introduce you with some of the key concepts and terms we're going to be using. The concept uh, site of memory or lieu de mémoire was first introduced by French historian Pierre Nora. It denotes any significant entity, whether material or non-material in nature, which by dint of human will or the work of time has become a symbolic element of the memorial heritage of any community. It does not only refer to public monuments and places that embody cultural memory and the sense of historical continuity in strictly spatial terms, but it likewise relates to mnemonic practices such as festivals, holidays, anniversaries, etc. Nora pays special attention to sanctuaries, mausoleums, graveyards, and cemetery, uh, denoting these sites of memory as the boundary stones of another age, or as he puts it, illusions of eternity. In this regard, his position is close to Michel Foucault's concept of heterotopias or other places, other in relation to the usual cultural spaces. Cemetery is a highly heterotopic place since for the individual, it begins with this strange inversion of time, a shift from the loss of life to the quasi eternity, bringing back the presence of the beloved. Since the dawn of time, as we know, graves have been the oldest form of remembering. However, in Europe, it was not until the 14th century that a greater concern over the choice of the burial place came to the fore, whereas paying melancholic visits to the graves of the beloved ones in a way common to us today would have to wait till the age of romanticism. For the history of attitudes to death and dying, of particular importance is the work of the renowned French medievalist Philippe Ariès. In his essay Sur l'histoire de la mort en Occident, du Moyen Âge à nos jours, or in English translation, Western attitudes toward death from the Middle Ages to the present, he argued extensively on death rites, highlighting especially the role of epitaphs on tombstones. From the 17th century onwards, says Ariès, Commemorative inscriptions have become such an important element in funeral culture to the extent that they often surpass the very monument in importance, arousing strong impressions in visitors. Most of them are brief and formal, usually containing a record of the name, age and title, but also quotes, verses and credos, especially when we speak about those pertaining to famous authors. Now let's take a look at some of the examples. Here we have epitaph of Spike Milligan, which takes on a comical note consistent with his personality. After all, he was a famous comedian. It reads, I told you I was ill. Uh, on the other hand, Shakespeare did not want to be disturbed. Hence his epitaph composed as a quatrain contains a warning. Blessed be the man that spares these stones, and cursed be he that moves my bones. The third example is uh, the epitaph of famous American writer H.P. Lovecraft. Fans of this author opted for a line from one of his personal letters, I am Providence, referring to his beloved hometown where he spent his most prolific and carefree periods. Finally, epitaph number four, is a verse by famous Serbian poet Branko Milković, and it reads, Ubi me preja kareč, killed by a word too strong. This epitaph perhaps best summarizes his tragic life. During the preparation of this uh, presentation, we had hard times finding uh, the examples of writers' epitaphs that they chose themselves, as is the case with Tolkien. Uh, he wanted the names of his fictional characters, Baron and Luthien, to be added to his and Edith's names on their joint grave at Wolvercote Cemetery in Oxford. So far, we found no similar examples where the author identifies with his literary character in his epitaph. In this light, Tolkien's grave seems to be rare, if not unique, 
at least to our knowledge. Tolkien's wife, Edith, died on the 29th of November, 1971, seven months after her sudden passing. In a letter to their son, Christopher, Tolkien writes that he decided to sort out the inscription on the grave, expressing his wish to have Luthien carved beneath Edith's name and years of birth and death. That addition was very important to him as I quote, it says for me more than a multitude of words for she was and knew she was my Luthien. He goes on to explain that his intention was not a sentimental fancy or in any way comparable to pet names, but it was an homage to Edith as the inspiration for one of the fundamental stories in the Silmarillion. The event of Edith, Edith dancing for him in a small wooden glade filled with hemlocks at Roos in Yorkshire was a memory he cherished for the rest of his life, a memory so strong that he immortalized it through his writings and finally through the inscriptions on their joint grave. I presume that the, the tale of Baron and Luthien is fairly well known to the audience, but to let us summarize it briefly. It tells of the love between a mortal Baron and an immortal elf maiden Luthien and the obstacles they face in order to be together, of course. The first version of this story was written in 1917, the same year Edith danced for Tolkien in Rus which was an inspiration for the encounter of Baron and Luthien. He falls in love with her when he sees her dancing in a hemlock glade. Thingo, Luthien's father, did not want to give her hand in marriage to a mortal man and set a seemingly impossible task on Baron to bring him a Silmaril from the Iron Crown of Morgoth. The quest turned out to be successful beyond all odds and it led to the first marriage between a man and an elf, but also to Baron's death. Unable to deal with the death of her beloved, Luthien also died, but both of them were eventually reunited and granted another life as mortals. The story in a way reflects all the troubles of their youth and obstacles Tolkien and Edith faced to be together. But first and foremost, it is a reference to their youthful and undying love. As Tom Shippey noted, this tale remained deeply personal for Tolkien throughout his life, leading to his final wish to commemorate it in stone, a striking identification indeed. Its importance is confirmed and emphasized by Christopher Tolkien too, in his preface for the book Beren and Luthien, published exactly 100 years after the tale was first conceived thinking that it was to be uh, the last of his father's writings that he edited and published, he said that it was chosen in memoriam because of the tale's deeply rooted presence in Tolkien's life. Bearing in mind everything already stated, we can interpret Tolkien's grave on several levels. Its most basic function is to keep the memory of the deceased alive and provide place for remembering for those closest to him. In the first place, family, friends, colleagues, perhaps students. Secondly, we can observe it within the Christian context, represented by the sign of the cross above Edith's name. Another layer of meaning, and the one most extensively analyzed so far, involves Tolkien's personal imagination, that is, his intention to once again affirm the connection between his marriage and the story of Beren and Luthi. Last but not the least, we can perceive it as a distinctive pilgrimage site, which does not only imply individual private acts of remembrance, but also organized commemorative acts, such as the ceremony of Enialie, the final stage of Oxenmut. You're about to hear more about that from Mina. Thank you. Uh, in order to analyze the contemporary reception of the grave and its importance in terms of remembering Tolkien today, I will present some of the results of a survey I conducted in January this year, which targeted participants who have visited Tolkien related places in the UK. 500 responses were gathered 
um, in January, and among them, 315 participants had visited Tolkien's grave, which is 63%. A part of the survey was specifically designed for the respondents who visited the grave in order to discover what that experience meant for them. They were asked five questions related to their visit, which reveal their impressions and attitudes towards the location, the grave itself, and the inscriptions on it. The participants were asked uh, to assess how important to them was visiting Tolkien's grave in comparison to other Tolkien-related locations in the UK. And as you can see from the chart, for the majority of them, visiting Tolkien's grave was extremely important. On a scale of one to five, one being the least important and five the most important, almost half of the respondents said that it was the most important location to visit. Additional 35% said that it was very important, which goes to show that 85% of people who visited the grave see it as an especially significant site of memory. The participants were also asked to pick a favorite location among the ones they visited and explain why they chose it as their favorite. 125 respondents said that their favorite was Tolkien's grave, which is almost 40% of the people who visited. Among the reasons given as to why the grave is their favorite, the participants most frequently said that it was a very emotional, meaningful, and moving experience for them to be able to pay respect to their beloved daughter at his grave. They usually pointed out that the place was peaceful, quiet, private, and thought-provoking, and that that was where they felt the most connected and closest to Tolkien. A number of them said that they felt humbled, and liked that the grave was simple, but well cared for. Fifteen participants mentioned the names of Aaron and Lutian as the reason they loved the place. Some of them knew about their presence on the gravestone prior to the visit, and some were surprised by the inscriptions but all of them found them deeply meaningful and moving. Nine participants said that visiting the grave was a pilgrimage-like endeavor for them, further emphasizing the special status of the site as the main spot where people paid their respects and honored the memory of their favorite daughter. As one of them said, to visit both him and Edith at once was a great honor, an experience given further weight by the thousands of like-minded pilgrims who had sang, wept, and contemplated at that exact spot for so many years. The participants were also asked to describe their motivation for visiting the grave, and the most common answer was to pay respect. Many descriptions of the circumstances of the visit are telling of the emotional impact and significance of the visit for the fans, some of them wanting to do it for years and perceiving it as a quest or pilgrimage, seeing the grave as the best place to express their gratitude and appreciation of Tolkien. Some also picked symbolic dates for their visit, such as Bilbo and Frodo's birthday, and some said that they sang or read something from Tolkien's works on the grave. It is interesting that some people mentioned the desire to see the names Baron and Lutian as their motivation. For some participants, it was a long overdue dream come true, like for these two participants from Poland and Mexico.
The second answer is, at least for me, especially lovely for the choice of the objects left on the grave. Some leaves from Mosley Bog and Sir Hall Mill. The location uh, and the grave itself were most commonly labeled beautiful and peaceful and the visiting experience moving and emotional. The grave was uh, described by most participants as simple, ordinary, humble, modest, unpretentious, unassuming, understated, appropriate, respectful, private, quiet, peaceful, calm, and serene. These are the terms that appear in half of all the answers. The second most common way of describing the grave included words such as lovely, beautiful, nice, gorgeous, magical, perfect, impressive. Significant number of participants noted that the grave was well kept and cared for, as well as often visited. 48 respondents liked the flowers, notes, and other tokens of appreciation people left on the grave as an expression of their love, gratitude, and respect. Several answers even compared it with the shrine and said it had a sacred character due to the things left on it. On the other hand, some people disliked the practice of leaving things at the grave and found it inappropriate. For some people, the grave was easy to find, but some complained that it was difficult. And a number of people said that the signposts leading to the grave were very helpful. Some used the terms touching, emotional, and moving to describe the grave, and only 10 participants found it simpler and smaller than expected. Most participants actually liked its simplicity. and found it appropriate in accordance with Tolkien's own beliefs and values. Some visitors said that they loved the names Baron and Lutien on the gravestone and even were moved to tears by them. As David Tracy from Canada put it, the whole magic of it rested upon seeing such a humble tombstone and knowing it meant so much more. The next question posed further investigated participants' opinions about the names of Baron and Lutien being on the gravestone. The most frequent terms used were touching, moving, emotional, poignant, followed by various ways of saying that the inscriptions are symbolic of Tolkien and Edith's relationship, an expression of their love, a message of love and respect, a nice homage parallel to their love story, which inspired the story of Baron and Lutian, who also had to overcome many obstacles in order to be together. In the similar vein, many respondents said that it shows how profoundly Tolkien related to his writings and emphasizes the connection between his life and work, being a lovely testimony of his love for both Edith and his sub-creation. Many described it as beautiful, lovely, romantic, and sweet, and said that they loved it. A significant number of participants said that it was appropriate and fitting, and 10% of participants stressed that it was appropriate and meaningful since it was his own choice. Some found it to be a nice personal touch, as well as poetic, inspiring, perfect, fantastic, while well, some pointed out that it makes the story of Baron and Lutian even more beautiful, powerful, significant, and real. A small number of people found it surprising or had no opinions or feelings about it. These are some of the most indicative answers to illustrate all previously said. Um, they show that for many visitors, the inscriptions represent an addition which provides an insight into how deeply personal the story of Baron and Lutian was for Tolkien and sheds a new light on its importance within the legendarium. Mm -hmm. 
Many participants obviously love the connection between Tolkien's private life and his work embodied in stone. As some of them pointed out, going back to Shippey's remark, it is a striking identification, the ultimate fantasy homage and a brave decision, but seen by most fans as appropriate, profound and beautiful. Also speaking of broader cultural writer's epitaph, such an identification is rare, if not unique, as Dan already mentioned. Finally, when talking about Tolkien's grave as a site of memory, there is a ceremony which represents an important part of commemorating Tolkien at this location, Enialie. The word itself means remembrance or memory in Quenya, and it is used for the concluding part of Oxenmuth, the Tolkien Society annual event held every September on the weekend closest to Bilbo and Frodo's birthday. On Sunday morning, the attendees of Oxenmoot take a coach trip to Wolvercott Cemetery, where the ceremony consists of the chair reading something from Tolkien's works, replaying, and singing of Namaria. In the survey, 61 participants mentioned the event. A number of them described it as moving and overwhelming. And as many who already attended the event know, it is a very emotional occasion and it usually involves crying. For some people it is the only way of experiencing the site and if compared to private visits to the grave it provides a significantly different experience, collective, ceremonial and ritualistic in nature. In addition to numerous individual private ways of honoring the professor at his grave, the ceremony of Enialie as a shared act of remembrance organized by the society adds new layers of meaning to the overall reception of the site. Of course, there are many modes of remembering Tolkien and his works, and the grave is only one place where his memory is kept alive, but perhaps the one where people frequently feel the closest to him. This sense of connection is further enhanced by Tolkien's own decision to commemorate not only his wife and himself at their final resting place, but also his sub-creation by adding the names Beren and Lutian as an epitaph. For many people it may seem insignificant, but not for those who know that those names mean so much more. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you both for rounding off our sem seminar as well. It was a fantastic talk and it, I think a little uh, quite uh, well well placed as well, thinking about um, the idea of remembrance, uh, especially at the end of our seminar um, as well. So it really reflects uh, some of the themes uh, for today's. Can I ask, um, while some questions are coming in, what made you want to specifically look at Tolkien's grave? Like, why, why talk specifically about that landmark? Um, okay, hi, uh, thank you, Will. Um, thank you everyone for uh, the comments. Um, so, as probably some of you may know already, um, my PhD is um, investigating uh, Tolkien-related cultural memory, and one part of it is obviously the sites of memory which are related to Tolkien and the grave is one of the most important uh, places mm. and what was especially interesting to me and Dan from like a couple years ago yeah. um, when we started thinking about it um, it was the identification with Baron and Lutian and those inscriptions on the grave because we couldn't find any similar example of uh, such an author and characters identification and yeah then we started talking about doing a paper and it took us a while <laughs> so, um, to decide to present it um, and 
Well, because part of my research uh, is related to investigating how people um, um, who visited talking relate, related places in the UK or in New Zealand, I've done several surveys and then I decided to incorporate um, a special part about the grave and use it for this purpose. Yeah, basically our hypothesis is that uh, this epitaph uh, extends the significance of Tolkien's grave as a site of memory, endowing it with new layers of, of uh, meanings. Uh, practically, is it functions as a monument within a monument. And because of this uh, bond, relation between memory and his personal imagination. The way how he connected uh, real per persons with fictional characters. Yeah, in a way, um commemorating his own life and yeah. both of them and as well as his work. Yeah. Um, amazing, thank you. Um, and we, we have the questions are starting to come in from our audience now as well. So um, uh, you mentioned that people rain, leave a range of objects um, at the grave, but what are the most common objects people leave um, at the grave site? Okay, so there was uh, one question um, related to that, but I didn't present any results um, for this uh, presentation. Uh, people most usually leave flowers or notes, um, and there are sometimes other objects like some figurines or Lego figures or um, similar, um, well, things related to Legendarium. And this is maybe an interesting anecdote. Um, there were two answers. Um, I'm not sure they are about the same thing, but they may be. So one person from Brazil said that she left, she or he, I don't remember, um, left a figurine of Gollum on the grave. Um, and then the other answer from the USA said that when he or she visited, saw a figurine of Gollum on the grave and found it a bit weird. <laughs> so that was an interesting thing. So yeah, there are different things, but I think most common ones are flowers or notes or like poems or short um, notes with, you know, words of gratitude or something like that. Yeah, super, thank you. Um, okay, another uh, question asks, I know the letter about uh, the Luthien in yeah, I know the letter about the Luthien inscription. Where is it documented that the Beren inscription uh, was Tolkien's decision as well? Because uh, he wrote it in a letter to his son, Christopher. He explicitly uh, said, uh, expressed his uh, wish how he wanted his grave to be arranged with the additional inscription uh, beneath Edith's name and then uh, beneath his own name. Yeah, okay. we haven't actually we haven't actually found a specific confirmation of Beren being be beneath his name. Yeah, well, okay. but yeah, yeah um, uh, I don't know. We ha and we haven't found such a document, but we can assume that that was also his wish. It would be a bit weird just to put Lothian beneath Edith's name mm. and not at Baron beneath his name, I guess, so. Yeah, we haven't delved uh, deeply enough into this issue, but. Oh, you know. <laughs> just think that uh, he did it in his lifetime and probably did both things. It yeah. would be weird if he did just one, I guess. Yeah, be a bit like fragmented. You want to have, have it connected. So, but well, I'd, I, yet again, I'd like to thank the both of you for rounding off um, our summer with a excellent paper. Thank you both.